How to cousins, I'm Rusty the reseller and we got quite a show for you today. We've got lots of things to go through. We've got jewelry, we've got a large box full of various collectibles and antiques which we've got to get into and we'll look at them and talk about them and a variety of other things today. It's it's going to be great. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, we uh, are off to a great start on the new channel called What Sold. And it's all about just the things that we sold and how much we paid for them and how much we sold them for. It's run by my brother down here at the warehouse. And uh, he's doing just such a great job. I'm super proud of him. If you haven't seen that yet, please check it out. Without further ado, let's get into this stuff. We have a variety of fun things to show you and talk about today. We're going to go over some of these items. A little bit later in today's video, we're going to talk about jewelry. You'll see I have a variety of earrings set up here for photographing along with this. Oh my goodness, folks. What you're looking at are thousands of pieces of costume jewelry. We've got stuff from uh, Christmas down in here. This, These bags are full of pairs of earrings. Right next is a box, a uh, container full of brooches, bracelets, watches. Those are uh, sets, so like a brooch and an earrings together, for example. And then that's all necklaces. We're getting into this to make some really big lots soon. And then we also have this box of items, which we went to a yard sale, and they had a bunch of individual stuff, and we said, hey, how much for all of it? We got a real good discount, and and uh, we said, you know, it just throw it all in one box. And by throw, we didn't mean throw. Gently place it in the box for us, please, and we'll take it, and you can save other boxes. And so we'll get into that, and uh, we got a couple of games we're going to do, but let's get right into this here. So what we have um, are several different types of items. We just started up on TikTok uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I'm going to be doing mostly talking on there. Um, uh, I try to control my ticks, and hopefully you won't see many of those, but um, this is the very first video we did. We're going to try to do a daily one on there. So we're Rusty the Reseller, at at Rusty the Reseller, is uh, is on there. My very first video we did yesterday, we'll do one later today, is on this little saucer. I think it's quite, it's quite beautiful. When I bought this, um, it was really kind of darkened yellow on here, but I could tell by scratching my thumb on a little bit that it was, it could be removed. I paid $1.50 for this. This is, if you look on the back, and that's oftentimes what you need to do, it's not unlike jewelry, all right? And we use a crack method for jewelry. It's quality, uh, rarity, age, and condition. Okay, crack. You got to check all those things. But here we go. Royal Copenhagen, Denmark. And you got a number on here. It's really good condition. You can see there is a little faint bit of discoloration on here, but I think I can even rub a little bit more of that off. But anyhow, very good condition. It is not cracked. It is not chipped. There's no crackling. It's beautiful, folks. I thought, I knew for a fact that for $1.50, somebody would want this, even just to put up on their bookshelf or something. I was amazed to find that these can sell up as much as $70, up to $100 for a single one. Now, there are ones that have sold uh, in a set, and they come with little teacups too, but let's say somebody had a set and they broke one, they want to replace it, or maybe they just lack the look of it. So, these things, folks, can be found all the time if you know how to research and maybe you already have the knowledge or maybe you're like me you don't have a um, like a catalog knowledge of all genres of all things but you know where to go and how to research it and so you can use things like google lens ebay has a feature where you can put uh you can click on the little um photograph icon do the same thing as google lens it loads a picture that you've taken in there and it will search for things in their uh in their online platform to see if they can find something like it I'm going to do very, very well on that piece. Here's a couple other fun things. This is uh, what this is like a corn cob pipe. Okay, it uh, it hasn't been used. This is more for just looks or display. Although people do um, smoke at them sometimes, and what they call these a lot of times is the Missouri meerschaum. 
So a meerschaum is actually um, a porous white stone found off the coast of Turkey, and they use uh, they use that for um, for making pipes. And I don't know if I have one here to show you today. I've got most of mine in an antique store to sell. But essentially, it's a porous stone. They carve it. It's very good for carving. It's a soft stone. And um, they attach a stem to it, and they they bore it out, and they make a pipe out of it. And they uh, cure it with, uh, I believe it's beeswax and whale blubber. All right. And uh, that may sound gross to you. It, it, it doesn't get in, in into the smoking or anything, but essentially that cures it to protect it. And as you smoke, the tar from the tobacco is sucked into the pores of uh, of the um, the stone itself, and that over time it will color it. And oftentimes you'll see it in the stem first. It'll start to darken, and it will no longer be white. And expert ones or ones that have been smoked for a long time will have a face, and sometimes, like say a man with a beard, maybe the skin will turn a dark color and the beard will be nice and white still. It's really cool. So I know I got on a rabbit hole about meerschaum pipes, but this is clearly not a meerschaum. This is sort of like uh, the 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 rural version <laughs> in the United States of uh, a meerschaum pipe. It is porous. It kind of acts the same way, although it looks completely different. People will buy these to smoke. Oftentimes, they just want to put them up on a bookshelf. This, I could probably get $20, $25 out of them. I've sold one like this for as much as $60 in the past, although I think that that was um, kind of a unique situation. This is a beautiful little piece that came in an antique store buyout. I don't come across them like this very often. What you're looking at is a um, an ashtray, essentially. Um, one of the big, one of the obvious ways you know that it's an ashtray is these little cutout sections here on the side, like this. And that is in place for a cigarette, cigarillo, or a small cigar to just be laid down here while you're not smoking it. Say you want to get up and, and go do something, you can go to the restroom or something, and you just you just lit up, well, <clears throat> just stick her on here. It'll hold it in place. It'll ash into that. This one looks to have never been used, or if it had been used, it has been very, very well cleaned. And the reason I say I don't find ones like this very often is that this is on sort of a stand, a pedestal. It's uh, just like a, a bright kind of like a brass color. You can see there's a, a number there, which is probably in reference to the mold that was used to make that particular piece. It would have been poured into a mold and created. Um, this is a, a, a made out of crystal, so it's it's lead crystal, not unlike decanters of the early uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Very heavy, but it's in really good condition. It I don't know how I would describe the the. Um, the style of it, because it it's not exactly, certainly not Art Nouveau, it's not exactly Art Deco either, it's kind of more like, um, I don't know, would you call that Edwardian? This is definitely more like an older style, like 1800 style. I don't actually know how much this will go for. I haven't researched the price, and uh, but I just think it's, uh, it's actually a beautiful piece. It's artistic uh, for sure. We got this also at a thrift store for $2.50. It's blue, um, and I'm not exactly sure if what I'm about to tell you definitely applies to this, but certainly one similar to it. They call this a swung vase, S-W-U-N-G. Uh, there's a couple of other things uh, that they refer to it as, depending on the, the height and how it's fluted. But you can see this is definitely a, a hand-blown thing. You've got the pontal mark here where they broke it off after they created it. It's quite stunning. It's smaller, so you're not going to put a bunch of heavy, big flowers in there. It'd be a smaller piece if you were going to actually use it for that. But it's also a piece of art. So some people like these just to sit to uh, appreciate the look of it in and of itself. The best color that we sell uh, faster and for the most money is green. So emerald green color uh, are the best as far as our sales have been, but blue and some of these other unique colors can also do very well. Moving our way back, we have this. Um, it is a copper kettle, or not a kettle, but like a pitcher, essentially, um, that has been retrofitted, as you can see, with a cord and turned into a lamp. Now, it didn't come with a lampshade on it, but we have several lampshades at our disposal, so we'll find one that looks nice um, and offer that up as well. I paid $6 for this, and it does work. We plugged it in. It said at the at the place we bought it, it was a Habitat for Humanity Restore, that it was tested and it works. Um, the bulb works. It's, it's nice. Um, I paid $6 for this because, you know what? 
even the the uh, picture itself would be worth more than that if it were just by itself. But a functional lamp, you put a little lampshade on it, people who like uh, this look or pictures and things, I'm not going to polish it or anything. I'm going to let it stay as it is. Um, but I was quite happy to get that. I, you know, I'll probably put this up for twenty or thirty dollars. Uh, I'll probably start it at an auction in case there's more interest than I had anticipated, and we'll go from there. All right, set that over. I'm going to pull this up now. This is a cute little planter. I paid two dollars for this. This is like a kind of like a yellow crackle um, glaze on this, but is is ceramic as you can see. Has this little motif. It's sort of an older look. Um, you can see on in here someone had used it actually uh, for a, a candle because in the bottom down there you'll see wax. So Rusty's got to get down in there and try to carve that out a little bit and free it up, clean it up a little bit on the inside. Not too much though. Probably somebody will use it as a planter. Although you could use it even as a as like a you know a vase of some kind. So kind of a wide neck vase if you wanted to put a bunch of stuff in there for a little um, display. Um, this is. Um, this is a replica of ones that had originally been made in France and had this beautiful yellow glaze. I don't know if most people would really know the difference, honestly, but uh, for for you know the small price we paid, I imagine I can get twenty to thirty dollars out of this. Uh, may not sell overnight, but eventually, especially now it's spring, people are planting, people want things um, to add to their arsenal, and so it was good timing on that. These little. Uh, sh these are actually like cordial or type shot glasses. It would be like a double, maybe even a triple shot. They're brown. They're etched with these little leaves you can see right here. Uh, kind of sweet. Um, I don't know if they've actually been used before or not, but they are hand-blown little things. They've had attached handles put on there, and I've got a pair. That's much better. I'd love to have even like four or five, but it came as two. Paid a dollar a piece for these. This set I might put up for anywhere between $14 and $20, um, so I'll definitely make some money at that. Again, this isn't, you're not retiring on this stuff, folks, but I'm just kind of showing you this is our bread and butter. We do have items that sell for hundreds and thousands of dollars every month. Big pieces, instruments, artwork, um, really nice jewelry, but... You know what? We don't subsist on that. This is the stuff that is the everyday stuff that I believe you can find in your area too if you know what to look for. Here's another thing. I've had really good um, luck. I say luck. I've just good experience, uh, uh, drawn on experience of selling bottles and things that have uh, crosses or um, crucifixes and things on them. I think that this was originally for a candle. It's clearly been uh, used up. Uh, washed out, but it's got this. This could serve a purpose as, uh, again, like a flower vase if you wanted to do that. You could set it and put like colored glass or stones or marbles in it or even like dyed uh, water to give it a beautiful look, or you could just set it up on a bookshelf by itself. It has many potential uses and therefore many potential buyers. So um, just paid a dollar for this. Um, just an old glass, but it is embossed. Um, and you can, as you can see, it's got, uh, you know, it's, it's decent condition. And so I'm not expecting to get a bunch, maybe 14 bucks from this, but for a dollar expense, that's, that's pretty doggone good. Here's one that I was pretty excited about, not because I love the piece necessarily, but just because of what I found. Um, and this is something that you should know. That's why I want to show it to you. This is a, a sort of like an artistically made uh, vase of some kind, vase. Um, and you what you have is sort of like this etched, frosted etched design of a cat. Um you know, on the front here, and you can see it's quite thick and it is quite heavy. This thing probably weighs, oh gosh, I don't know, six or seven pounds just in my hand here. It has this little section in here that is uh, open. I could barely fit my finger in there. And some people might be like, well, I don't care about cats, or it's kind of a cool looking design, but I don't know if it'd be worth it. It's heavy, it'll be a little bit more expensive to ship, and you're not wrong on, on any of those counts. However, what you need to do is just like jewelry, just like ceramics, folks, you need to turn this puppy over. And this is what I discovered when I turned it over. Look at that. There's a bunch of writing on the back here. What this is, is it's a company, it's a person indication, it's an indication of dates, maybe uh, the the what number in the run this is of what they made. I don't know exactly what all the numbers mean yet, but I do know that by just simply looking at this right here on the top, it says Orifor, O-R-R-E-F-O-R-S, 
And this is like a, an artisanal, uh, artisan-made vase. And it's got this person's uh, information and the company information on there. These things can sell uh, for, you know, dozens of dollars. We're talking like 70, 80 bucks. In some cases, more than that have sold. Some are sitting up for less than that and haven't sold yet. So it just depends. But um, always look at the bottom whenever you're looking at things that are made of glass or crystal because artisans will etch their information on the bottom and sometimes you'll come across something that's by a pretty well-known or well-collected artist. These are just small little mirrors that have what look like a picture frame kind of around them and you can see I paid a dollar ninety-nine. actually I think it was half off so I think it was a buck <laughs> for each of these so two dollars uh, somebody might want this as like a display to put in a, you know a bedroom a bathroom or or something uh, maybe up on a bookshelf and just to kind of add a little bit of interest to um, an otherwise kind of ordinary space um, I would put these up for just probably maybe 15 to 20 bucks and just see what happens on those um, let's see here move in on all right we got a few of these little things this is a little Asian piece it's made of kind of a brass and then you have what they call cinnabar on the outside of it carved in this like floral pattern in this beautiful kind of like a lighter blue kind of like an opaqueish cobalt uh, color again this is an ashtray so again not unlike this other ashtray we talked about in a minute you, you've got this little section right here same here but there's only two on this one so you can put whatever you're going to smoke right there uh this is both something that could be functional you've got this enamel paint in here so that's going to protect it fairly well but also it could be just um something to put up again for display purposes uh, i think i paid three dollars for this i could get twenty dollars out of this all day long pretty easily Came across one of these last year, and here's another one. It's uh, this really beautiful kind of jade color green dish. And I imagine that these were originally sold in sets, although I only have one, but I only paid $2 for it. Someone who wants to replace one from a set that broke or who just likes the color and look of it uh, will be interested in that. And then here's another piece that's quite a bit older. Um, we're looking at late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, you can see we got dragons on here. This is uh, hand painted. On the back, you have um, a stamp that is going to most likely indicate uh, things like time period, region that it was produced, and maybe who was the polit uh, political leader or uh, of the, the country at the time that it was produced. Um, you can see that it's glazed on the inside as well. Uh, still, you know, kind of rough, not, not the cleanest, not the best looking piece in the world, but somebody who collects these pieces might want it. And since I got it so cheaply, it'll be easy to sell it because I don't need to, I, I can afford to sell it for less than other people are trying to sell it for. I was very excited to find this. Let me see if I can flip her over. Here we go. Tiffany lampshade, $8. Now, this is not a Tiffany brand lampshade. You can see it's got some residue and some stuff that we're going to have to kind of clean. You can see I can kind of scrape it off with my thumbnail. This needs a little bit of cleaning to do. Not a big deal. The good news is it is not cracked or chipped in any spots that I can tell from a cursory investigation. This is a, a, more like a Tiffany style. Okay, so Tiffany is a very well-known uh, glass and even jewelry maker uh, and, uh, and just kind of artistic pieces. But... Um, this is uh, what they would call slag glass. This is a slag glass. It is stained glass, actual glass pieces in here. It's a beautiful little design. You've got some creams, some greens, and some blues. I like it. It's a little bit of an art deco sort of look. Um, it is a very smaller shade. You can see how I can put my hand over almost the entire thing. So this, for example, would not fit well up on top of here because it's not even hiding the, the light. So I'm going to have to find around here at the warehouse if we have one. If not, I'll be on the lookout for one, uh, a lamp, a little small lamp to put under this. I think it's cute for $8. If I wanted to sell this, I know I could make some good money, but I think I would, I think I maximize my sale if I'll get a piece to go with it. And to tell you honestly, that's, that's, 
I have a handful of things that I'm always looking for another component, another piece to put with something before I sell it. Uh, artwork is a really good example of that. I got a couple of really old pieces, uh, oil paintings that are just odd sizes because they're European. And I'm uh, for a long time I looked for, you know, like for example, this, this painting up here, which we talked about in the previous video. I don't have a frame for it. So it's a 14 by 19 size, which is a very odd, it's not a standardized size. You can't go out to a, a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or anything like that and get one, unfortunately. So uh, I got to find a frame and probably either have one made for it or cut down. Uh, but anyways, the point is I'm going to maximize my profitability by selling something that is complete as opposed to uh, a portion. Now, of course, I could put this up and sell it uh, this week for the right price if I wanted to. I could make money off of that $8 easily, but um, I'm just going to I'm just going to look around for a little while. If I can't find one, of course, I'll go ahead and sell it. Um, here's a couple other things, folks. We went out to the antique store and we kind of pulled a few things out that hadn't sold. And I'm going to try to put them up on, on, um, eBay here. What we are looking at here are a variety of, uh, between 1940s and I would say 1960s. Um, we got that up, upside down here. Ben Roos. We had a, a Gru in there and we have, this one's a Sundaz, Sandoz, Sandals, something like that. Here's another Ben Roos. But these are all gold-filled, rolled gold. That means there's a, a percentage of solid gold on the outside of the bezel and on the inside. Waltham, if you turn over watches on the back, you can see right here, if I zoom in at the top, it says, can we zoom in on that? Yeah, 10 karat roll gold-filled. So rolled gold, gold filled means that there is a small percentage of gold on the outside of it. We have several different ones here. This is a really nice Wittenauer one. Um, some of these came with original, uh, um, you know, bands. Some of these I actually had uh, vintage, what they call new old stock, meaning they're old because they weren't manufactured they were manufactured maybe 30 or 40 years ago, but they are new in the sense that they've never been taken out of the package or used. And so I put those uh, on these bands where I put some of these really nice like leather bands uh, or, you know, animal hide or skin type uh, bands on these to make them nice. They're all also functional. And the great thing about these is that they're automatics. They don't require a battery. You just wind them up in the beginning of the day and set them at the right time and that should last you all day. Um, I love it. Uh, I prefer these actually over any watches with batteries because uh, I don't want to have to mess with the upkeep or have the tools in order to open the backs and stuff. You end up scratching parts of the uh, of the watch and you don't want to and that affects resale uh, values. So anyhow, these are all going to be somewhere in probably the $75 to $100 range for the right buyer. We got six or seven of those. Pick them up at yard sales or flea markets. Sometimes you can get these for two or three bucks a piece. Um, people don't think that they work anymore. Uh, all the time I buy, um, automatics, they say just for parts or as, as is not working. Well, it works. You just don't know how to operate it. You got to pull it part of the way out. You got to wind it up and you got to set the time. So if you know how to use these things then they can be, they can be really good. All right. And then we got this right here. Bought this yesterday and I paid up for it. It is a 14 karat gold bracelet. Let's see if I can zoom in, get, get some of this. You can kind of see here, we got this claw on the inside right there, right there, right there on that spot. It's actually got a mark in it, it says 585. 585 is European hallmark for 14 karat gold. Also, right here, it has a number, it says Peru, but on the other side, it's got this beautiful kind of like sun uh, you know, motif, and it says 14K. And so this is, uh, it's not that heavy. It's between three and a half and four grams of, uh, of solid gold. But I paid $100 for it, and, uh, you know, I can sell it for double that easily. I'll probably sell it for the 320 to 350 range. Maybe not tomorrow, but definitely I'll, I'll get that price eventually. Because it is a unique, I don't see the style of three the three-chain band uh, uh, kind of look all that often. So it's unique. Uh, it's lightweight, so it, it, it's wide enough that... You can definitely notice it, but not so heavy that it feels weird on your wrist. All of these items, folks, all of these items, except for a few of these watches, and, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Everything else was purchased this week. This week, 
in and around within about 30 miles of where the warehouse is. I know you can find things like this, folks, where you're at. Uh, all the time I hear, well, you're just lucky, Rusty. My, things just work out well for you. Well, <laughs> I don't. I, I suppose that's possible. But if I didn't know what to look for in the first place, and if I didn't know how to research stuff, of course I'm not going to come home with this stuff um, because it, it's all about learning. And that's why we have this channel. It's really about educating people. We don't require membership fees. We don't require you to pay us any money. We don't ask anything of you. We just want to sort of share the, the information because um, everyone could use an extra buck uh, out there. Sometimes uh, maybe you want to move into a new career and you're investigating this. Maybe you just need a little side hustle. And there's nothing wrong with either of those, folks. So get out there and uh, I think you can find this stuff. This is my new method for photographing lots of jewelry. I bought these plastic little black trays. And I bought them actually at retail cost, and they were only they were five dollars a piece. So I know that the person who sold them to me probably only paid a buck or two for them. They probably bought several in bulk. But what I do is I'm I'm setting up about twenty to twenty five pairs of costume earrings in one of these, and I've bumped it a few times so they're not perfectly in in spots. But what I can do is I can put one like this. Let me move it over a smidge here. I got one down below it as well. And I'm going to move this back like this and then i'll slide this other one back into place again they're going to move around but what i can do then is i can come up high and i can take one large picture for example of all of these together now imagine i have hundreds of pieces which i do as i indicated a moment ago down there i can do several pieces in each of these i'll take one shot vertically to get those and then i just repeat so i'll do one uh, of all of them like this flip them over, do another, uh, and then go to the next one. You can do 24 pictures without paying extra on a, a, a listing. So you can imagine how many I could actually photograph. You would want one photo, uh, you know, in a perfect world, you'd want one photo kind of representing everything that you have in an attractive shot to draw people in to look more. And then you have closer up photos of these pieces. But you can see we got some nice stuff here uh, kind of from various ages, but like heavily in the 1950s and 1960s here. A few from the 40s, definitely a handful from overseas and places like Hong Kong, Japan, Austria, and West Germany. But then we've got a variety that are, are more kind of common um, manufactured from the United States, costume jewelry. We're talking brands like Monet, Napier, Roman, uh, and then some nicer ones like Weiss, Coro, Carnegie, um, you know, you know, um, oh, Miriam Haskell. You know, various nicer boutique, uh, Z, what is it, Z, 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 Is that what you guys are saying that it's called? It's G-I-V-E-N-C-H-Y. Someone needs to applaud me for my efforts. Everyone gets on here and uh, and wants to correct me. I get it, folks. I, I'm not the best at pronunciating stuff. Uh, You'll have to bear with me um, and give me a little grace for that. But anyhow, <clears throat> we're getting into these. You can see if I come down here and show you. These are the bracelets, and they're just, there's a ton of them. Look at all of these brooches. This is uh, you know, admittedly not the best way to store them, but we're going to get them out in small lots. We're going to photograph them. We're going to put them. We're going to package them up really nicely. This thing is, I mean, this is all just earrings, bracelets, and brooches all Christmas time. We got a variety of watches, pocket watches, a lot of newer ones, but, you know, good condition. I mean, they've never, this is kind of like, this is a really good condition one. Um... Anyhow, these are the, the lots, and then we got a variety of necklaces in here just bagged up. This came from a large um, jewelry uh, collection. Oh, my goodness. Who could that be? Let's see who this is. How to, how you do? This is Rusty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. Um... I need you uh, over here today, if you could. We got a couple things that we just, uh, oh, we just need a little bit of help, of, of your help, if that's possible. Uh-huh. Yes. Great. All right, see you in a GIF. I'm excited, folks. Let's take a pause real fast on that, and let's give ourselves some room for um, a specialist that we had to call in today to take care of something that a couple of our viewers had asked. In fact, this will be a great time um, I think, um, to introduce a couple of cool segments. So this segment is all about a specialist called 
uh, who is basically a lead detective on searching stuff. And then after that, we got a new segment uh, that I'm excited to share, and then we'll jump back into this awesome stuff. Rusty, lead detective, surfing the interwebs, cracking the case, cause he's rusty. Lead detective, wearing disguises, what will you find? Cause he's rusty, the lead detective, don't you know that he's on the case? I'm gonna attack that search engine like a wild beast. Rusty here. I'm ready to get into some detective work. Some real serious stuff. Rusty Lee Detective here. I uh, was brought in for a special case. Someone uh, had asked Rusty to help him uh, and the warehouse crew to figure out uh, what to do with these. So these were bought in a lot. And initial searches indicated that these are generally valuable, you know, five to ten dollars a piece, except this one right here. This blue clear Darth Vader appeared to be selling for eighty to a hundred dollars in some cases on eBay. Whew, that's a lot of money. But the question became, how do I know if these are authentic Lego characters or if these are knockoff ones? I don't want to get in trouble for trying to sell a Lego character for several dollars and then find out that it's not the real thing. So how do I know? Well, that's a great question. I'm going to show you right now. Lego characters, what they call mini figures or mini figs for short, will have the Lego brand name on oftentimes multiple pieces of the body. But more often than not, the main spot that you can look and start is underneath of the head, also on the top of the legs when they come away from the body. So let me detach a few of these, show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, taking very special care and being sensitive to, to these little figures, I have decapitated each one of them. And I have then proceeded to draw and quarter them. Now, I'm not planning on draw, uh, you know, pulling behind my chariot or anything. This is not a torture video. This is really more of an inspection video and trying to teach you a few things. So, the first place I want you to look is I want you to take the head off, these heads right here, and I want you to flip them around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look right down inside the hole, right down inside of there. What you should see, if we flip it around till there's some light in there, and I don't know if my camera's actually going to show it very well, but it will say the word Lego, a very tiny word. There, you can barely see it. Do you see that right there? There's a flash, flashlight. There it is, Lego. It's in there. So I'm pretty confident that this particular one, and excuse my rough fingers, I've been doing a lot of work out with Flo out in the garden lately. It's drying my fingers out. Underneath of these, right in there in the head portion, that's where you're looking, folks. Let's see if I can zoom in and get... Do we have anything here? Let's get the... Can we get the light on that? Peaches, a little extra light, please. He's waving at me. I guess he, he's powerless in this situation. That also says Lego. And then we're going to look here at this Joker from a Batman and Joker series. And that should also say Lego in there if we can if we can get enough light. I'm trying to find a way to get that light to reflect for you folks. Ooh, we were close. It says, does it say it? Yes, it does. Lego, do you see it? You can just see it barely. Lego, it says it right there. Okay, once you've uh, gone to the heads and you've checked the heads, you need to then go to this portion here. They, they easily pull out. And you're just going to look at the top of that, and you're going to see it says the word Lego. Now, is it possible that there are manufactured you know, knockoffs that will also say Lego sometimes? It is possible, but oftentimes not. So here's the, here's the real thing. We weren't actually wondering about these as much as we were worrying about this one, because this is the one that supposedly is so, worth so much money, right? Little old you know, phantom Darth Vader here. So let's take a second. Let's disassemble this puppy. And then expect kind of around his uh, his neck region and his waist. All right, we now have this guy disconnected. So the first thing to do is to look up in to this section. And it's very clear. I'm actually not seeing anything. It's just clear plastic. That's not a good sign, folks. It's not a good sign. There's no Lego insignia on there. Now let's look at this. What do we got here? Oh, we got two little marks 
where it looks like that was in the mold and then the number one but i'm not seeing lego again to give you comparisons that says lego very clearly this it says lego very clearly this does not and so i'll hate i hate to do this but this sometimes happens i hate to say this but folks uh, the person who asked, um, unfortunately, this person ended up getting into something that has has a replica or a copy. This is not a registered Lego toy. This is one to, made to look like a valuable toy. And you know what? They do this with all kinds of stuff. They do this with jewelry. Sometimes they'll stamp things 14K to fool you, to make you think it's made out of gold. So you need to know how to, how to actually research this stuff. So this is not a Lego thing. It probably still has some value. Somebody might want it, but you can't try to sell this on eBay and call it Lego. You can't use the word Lego because it is not a Lego toy. It is something made to look like a Lego toy. This has been Rusty, Lee Detective. Uh, you know, now I gotta jump, I gotta jump on the next case, so I'll see you soon. Shoot. Man, that lead detective is good at his stuff, is he not? I'm um, glad he came by. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get him into some more stuff here again soon. Well, this is an old Mickey Mouse, as you can see. And um, there's a little old tag here, so you can kind of get a little bit of information. Uh, it's an all-new material, synthetic foam and cotton. Um, I guess it was new at the time, but it does say Walt Disney character on it. So this was either sold directly from a Walt Disney, uh, like a Disneyland or Disney World, or it, um, you know, was registered with them to be sold retail in another location. But that'll definitely sell. There are people, it's highly collectible stuff, Disney, as everyone knows. Uh, people go there. Well, here's some brightly colored suspenders. We've got all kinds of fun stuff in here. An old school bag. All right, what do we have? Here's a bag full of old wooden spoons and maybe even some bone handles that are or have been uh, dyed that'll be interesting we'll have to look at those they may be sold individually maybe it's good to sell them as a lot we got some uh, look at this we got some uh, an old luggage tag escort american tourister we got some old um uh, geodes Look at that, geode. All right, well, these things, we've got a very large rock and mineral collection. This will go nicely with some of the stuff that we're already selling. You can see a nice amethyst uh, specimen here. Those sell for 14 to $20 pretty commonly, pretty easily. Uh, here's a nice fossil. We got some sort of a some sort of an uh, you know oceanic aquatic varmint here that got caught in some dirt when the world almost ended. Uh, and uh, so we'll get that to somebody who will appreciate it. Um, we've got several of these. Look, here's another geode. I really like the outside of that. That's cool. You can kind of see if I hold this up to the light, you can kind of see uh, through it in some spots. That's really that's really a, a cool one, actually. Um, not as colorful. We don't have, like, all the spirals or designs and stuff, but somebody might want that. Um, I can see a various scissors down in here. Um, this is a bunch of old, say, like, army men and, uh, and stuff like that. It's a nice lot. I'd probably just sell that as a lot it, by itself, the way that it is. This is some sort of an interesting Asian, old Asian piece. You've got, um, what appears to be, uh, like, very low-quality jade. It may not be jade, but it may be. We've got something here that appears to be coral, possibly, uh, like, carved coral pieces. Um... In this sort of like motif, it's set uh, almost like a, it's like glued into place with this like um, some sort of uh, ma uh, printed material, like cotton material there, and then uh, it's just set up to be like a little a little stand, just a little something. Uh, somebody might might like that. We got an old bottle down in here, Ace. Ace of Spade bottle. That's cool. It's got its original cap on it. Very rusty, but, uh, you know, showing its age. Old rusty. You know, I show my, I'm show i showing my age these days, too, a little bit. Here's an old, uh, looks like a pestle, maybe. Like a, made to, like an old wooden one. Made to grind stuff. Um, that's cool. Don't see that every day. 
and just a variety of other things. We've got costume jewelry pieces we're going to have to pull out of here. we got old bobbleheads of Brett Favre throwing that football around. We've got other Disney, uh, it's like a little Disney, um, yeah, Snow White. He's, this is Sleepy, folks. He's just playing his little kazoo or whatever it is. We've got pencils. This is a good example of new old stock. It's new because it hasn't been taken out and used. They've not been sharpened, but it is older because it was manufactured a while back. Got little toy cars, old crowns. Oh, man, we got so much stuff to go through. Tiny little Stanley, um, you know, uh, wood wood carving things. Um, what else do we got here? This is an old measuring tape, looks like an old round. Look at that. Yep, it is. Oh, my. And, uh, you know, what do we got in here? Is this a camera? Nope. It's a really cool uh, old set of uh, binoculars. We've got another one right over here, too. Another really old car. You can see, uh, man, it's like an old truck. Oh, bummer. It's cracked. I don't know if that happened before it just being in this, but it's missing uh, an axle and a couple of the back wheels. But these are all like a, like a hard kind of rubbery plastic. That's pretty old. I don't know exactly how old. I'll have to look into it. But all kinds of stuff. Yeah, here's some little army men. I wonder if these came with it. These are die cast or like little lead and they're hand painted. Those might be able to be sold individually. We got a lot to do here, folks. Got even more spoons down in here. Some old flatware, variety of pieces of stuff. Who knows what's all in there? Goodness me. All right, well, maybe we'll find some treasures in here. We'll let you know soon. I'm excited. We got a brand new segment here called Asking for a Friend. I'm just asking for a friend. We had a recent cousin come on to the channel and ask for a friend. They said they got somebody they know who's wanting to sell a guitar. And they said, how do you go about shipping instruments? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. I hope your friend uh, has done some research so that they know generally what it's valued at so that they don't end up selling something way under its current value, especially if it's an older instrument. But assuming that they've done that, I would like, I usually go out to places like that sell instruments, uh, musical stores like Guitar Center. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can go into the store and say, hey, I need a box. I need a guitar box. And sometimes if they have them in stock uh, and they're just going to be putting them out and back uh, in order to be picked up uh, in the recycling, you can, sometimes they'll just give you one. Sometimes they like to charge you 10 or 15 bucks. But if you can't find one elsewhere for free, then that's about the best option because it is made for guitars. Uh, that's why they got it in the first place. And that's cheaper than it would be if you went out to, say, like a UPS store or something like that. I find that their boxes are usually a little bit bigger than you need, and they definitely cost more, like 30 to $40, which I hate to pay that for cardboard, you know? But oftentimes, I'll just go back behind where their bins are, and I'll just pull the box. Sometimes they've broken them down already, so I have to retape them. Other times, they're still intact entirely, and that's just free. Uh, they'd be sending it to the recycle anyway, so you're not stealing it. You're just recycling, reusing something, and that's good for our environment. So I would start there, those musical stores. If you can't find one there, you could always get on uh, Facebook Marketplace locally or something and just say, hey, I'm needing a box these dimensions. Does anybody have one? Another place you might look is like a furniture store or a place like that. They might have boxes as well. Good luck to you. As far as packaging the materials themselves, you can use um, bubble tape or bubble wrap, or you can use, I like to get these long rolls of like paper um, that you can just kind of rip off in whatever size you want. I use that a lot of times to wrap up jewelry and you can just tear them off and wad them up in little balls and stick them down in there. And if you press them down in good, that can pack things pretty darn well. Another viewer has just asked this week over there in New Zealand, they said they got this little trinket box and they said, Hey, you know what? Um, I use my magnet and this thing, it looks like silver. It's not magnetic. Is it made out of silver? Should I, should I, did I find an awesome score? Well, sir, uh, I'm so happy that you asked for this friend of yours. And let me try to give you that information. Maybe this will be helpful to somebody else too. Just because it's silver looking and isn't magnetic does not mean that it's made out of silver. In fact, there are a variety of different metals that are made, uh, used in the production of jewelry as well as other items like this little trinket box. 
the best way to know is to actually do a test because here are a few metals that uh, are actually used in the production of stuff that are not magnetic. Look at this, folks. Titanium, platinum, palladium. Now, those are good, fairly precious metals, but stainless steel, zinc, pewter, copper, aluminum, and tungsten. Folks, those are not magnetic. So you see, friend, you might have a treasure and you might have something that's not made out of silver. It might be nice and valuable based on where it was made, when it was made, the size of it, the motif on it, all of that. But your best bet is to actually get a scratch test that can be used to test gold and silver. There's a little type of fluid that they use that eats at the acid, you know, the acid that eats at the metal. That won't tell you the percentage of of silver in it if it's actually sterling silver but it will let you know if there is silver in it you can get those kits on amazon on ebay i have one all the time here and it helps me to determine whether or not a piece of jewelry is gold or silver well folks that's it for today later on this afternoon we're going to get into this new giant lot of action figures and toys you can find these things at local thrift stores and stuff for pennies on the dollar a lot of times and depending on the age or the type they can actually bring really good values for example if i made a lot of four or five spider-man um you know, action figure uh, lots on eBay, they can sell really well because it's a pretty highly collectible uh, action figure. There's a variety of others in here. If you get ones that are original to like the 1990s, like uh, G.I. Joe or Transformers or, or um, things like that, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they can do really well. And anything Star Wars can usually sell um, depending on the price. Good luck out there, folks. Hope you find some really great treasures this week. Let's go find some treasures. Rusty, rusty, rusty hat.